Hi there, this is Robin Andrews from Compu Academy, and this is a video about object oriented programming and also the beginnings of data structures such as linked lists. So, we have here a very simple example of a class definition. Now, if you're not familiar with classes and objects, let me just explain briefly how it works. So, a class is like a blueprint or a template from which objects are created. Okay, so you can think of this as like the plan but there's no actual instance of the node class. It's just a description of what it's going to look like if we were to make one. Yeah. And then we have an actual instance. So for example, here, when I make node one, I say it's equal to a node and I pass it this parameter of a, the string of a, which becomes an argument in what's called the constructor up here. So I may have lost you already. There's lots of terminology there, but that's the basic idea is we have a blueprint, we call the constructor, which means to create an instance. Okay, so we're not talking about the blueprint anymore. We're talking about an actual node, a particular node, rather than a general hypothetical node. It's a little bit, in some ways, like Plato's ideal forms, I believe. He had this idea that there were ideal forms for everything that exists in the actual world. And this is kind of related to that idea. So this line, it creates an actual node. It passes a to the constructor, which in Python is defined using this underscore underscore in it. So this is just the function which gets called whenever you create a particular instance of your class. It always calls this constructor by default, and we pass it in this parameter, this argument of A, which then becomes available within our class, okay? Don't worry too much about self. The basic idea is that every within every class, you're going to be referring to self a lot. And it just means this instance it means this particular instance we're talking about also gets passed as a parameter to the constructor, but you don't need to worry about that for now. That's you're probably going to lose yourself if you worry too much too early on about that. So what happens now? So self dot data, this now becomes a variable, but it's a variable which is particular to this particular instance of the node class and its value is set to what we pass in here as data. So self.data now in node one is gonna be A. Hopefully you can see why that's the case, okay? Self.next, that's another variable, is set to none. Now we're talking about linked lists or at least nodes, and so nodes have two attributes. So the name of these things is properties or attributes, okay? They're like variables within the class. So we have two, self.next is the data that we pass it, and self.next is initially set to none. And you'll see why we do that in a bit. Okay, and that's all that our class definition is. It's literally defining two attributes or properties, one of which is passed in as a argument to the constructor when we create an instance of our class using this notation here, okay? Then we have a function. Now this function is not actually inside of our class definition. We could have put it inside our class definition, but that would have changed slightly how we call it. So just to keep things very simple, I've not made this part of my class definition. I've just made it like a helper function that we can call in order to print from a given node. Okay. So the idea with these nodes is that they form a linked list. Okay. So linked list is a more advanced topic. Nodes you need to know about in order to build linked lists. Okay, so let's just create an instance of a node just to see how this works. So I'm gonna run this program now and drag the solution onto the same screen. You'll see that all we have here is A. Let's just explain what we've done here. We've created a node, we've called it node one, and we've assigned it the value of an instance of the node class with data of A, okay, and the next property will in fact be none. So you can see here in my visual representation here that I've got A pointing to none because the next property of my node is none as was defined here, okay? So think about that for a moment, let it sink in. Let's close that up. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more work with this class. So let me just uncomment that. I believe it's out four out three comments in idle and out four uncomments. It's very useful to be able to comment whole blocks and uncomment whole blocks like that. So it's worth learning some of these shortcuts that you find up here in the format menu. Okay, so now this code is gonna run. Let me just talk you through what it's gonna do beforehand. 
before I run it. So node two is another node, this time with the data value of B. And remember by default, its next value is still gonna be none when it's created. And node three has the data value of C, and it also has the next property set to none, okay, as we did up here. So at the minute, we don't have a linked list by any means. We just have some nodes that are floating around without any connection to each other. So the clever thing about linked lists is what we do is we join them together by setting the next property to another node. So you can see here node1.next now. I'm setting that next property to be the actual node2. Okay. And then node2.next, that's the next property of node2, is being set to the actual node, node3. Okay, so we end up with a situation like this, this bottom line here. We have node A is pointing to node B by virtue of having the next property set to node B. Where have I done that? Node one dot next, that's here. And then node B is pointing to node C, but node C has not been joined to anything, so it retains its default value of none because of what happened in the constructor. So in fact, that becomes very important with a lot of the algorithms associated with linked lists. This none property is how we tell that we haven't got to the end of our list. So for example, here in this print list function, while the current node is not none, okay, that means while we haven't got to the end, then we carry on printing the data. But once it is none, that means we've reached the end of our list. Yeah, so we exit our loop. So this is, an introduction to classes and also to linked lists and nodes. It's not in any way meant to be an in-depth tutorial about it. It's more an introduction to some of the key concepts that you're gonna need in order to take this subject further. Okay, I'll just run the code for you, show you the, the output. So you can see here, this A here is from our first print node one dot data. Now um, you'll see here that I've actually used two different print commands. I've got just the basic print here and I'm saying print the data property of node one, okay? And later on, there's all sorts of issues to do with data access and encapsulation that I'm not gonna go into here. So well, I'm literally just accessing the data property using this dot, okay? And that's why we've got A here. But here I'm using the print list function, which is a bit more sophisticated and has been defined up here as a way of iterating through the linked list and printing all of the elements. Okay, so that's the output here, ABC, is the result of print list. And you'll see it doesn't print none because we haven't asked it to. We could, if we wanted, we could add a bit more functionality to show none at the end of our list. But for now, this is just a basic introduction. So A, B, C, C points to none. So A, B, C, C is the last one. By default, we know that it's pointing to none, okay? So there it is, a very brief introduction to classes and linked lists. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.